Hello viewers, welcome to Mesology. In today's video, my focus is on an organ system which is mostly shied away by most of the teenagers. But to have a clarity about its structure as well as function is very much essential. Understanding about the reproductive organs of both biological males and females is very important because most teenagers, sometimes even the adults, are not properly aware of the anatomy of those reproductive parts. It's never too early to educate a child about their body and that they can watch for themselves the changes in their physique, health and protect themselves and also understand their boundaries. So in this video, let's get started with the female reproductive system. Female reproductive organs can be divided into two parts. The first being the primary organ, which is associated with the production of the ova or the egg cell. And the rest of them fall under the secondary or the accessory organs. So let's get started with the primary organ. There are a pair of ovoid, almond-shaped ovaries. These ovaries in a full-grown human female measures around 3.5 cm in length, 2 cm in width and approximately 1 cm in thickness. These ovaries are socketed in a shallow depression called the ovarian fossa. They are found on the lateral walls of the pelvic cavity. The ovary, which is like an hanging organ, this is held in place by the peritoneal ligament, which attaches the ovary to the wall of the uterus. There is another that connects it to the abdominal wall, which is called the mesovarium. This is also known as the ovarian ligament. If you look into the anatomy of the ovary, the ovary is covered by a layer of germinal epithelium, which is indeed a part of the visceral peritoneum. Inner to this, there is the tunica albuginea. This tunica albuginea is made up of the connective tissue. Content of the ovary is divided into an outer cortex and an inner medulla. Inside the cortex, it contains numerous ovarian follicles at different stages of its growth while the medulla is supplied with blood vessels, lymph channels as well as the nerve connections. If you look at the function of the ovary which I have already spoken to you that it produces gametes and that's why it's called the primary organs of the reproductive system but beyond this it also produces female hormones called estrogen as well as progesterone. Other than the production of hormone and the production of the gametes, it also helps to store the eggs to mature and indeed it also leads the eggs to ovulation. Next we will come across the accessory organs of the female reproductive system. The accessory parts of the female reproductive system includes a pair of fallopian tubes, then a single uterus which has a lower portion known as cervix and then it comes to the vagina which has an external part which is visible and is the outermost part of the female reproductive system. This is called vulva. Now let's get into details for each of these accessory parts of the female reproductive system. 
comes to the fallopian tube which is also known as oviduct so there is a pair of oviduct a right oviduct and a left oviduct these oviduct in an adult full grown female may vary in its length between 10 to 13 cm whereas its diameter usually ranges between 0.5 to 1.2 cm this tube like structure has a lining of mucous membrane inside and this is thrown into several folds and there is a papillary region as well inside this lining comes to the oviduct the part which is closest to the ovary it is thrown into finger like projections and those finger like projections are called the fimbri immediate to the fimbri there is a much swollen flask like area which is called the infundibulum it further prolongs into a little portion of the tube which is also thicker as compared to the rest of the part of fallopian tube this entire part is known as the ampulla of the fallopian tube next we come to a thinner part of the fallopian tube which is called the isthmus and finally there is a part of this fallopian tube which is found to connect to the you know uterus and this part is known as the intramural part so the function of this oviduct is to transport the ova when the ova has matured in the ovary it is picked up by the fimbri and it is let in into the fallopian tube via the ostia or the ostium which opens to the inside of the fallopian tube this is indeed the site of fertilization which is rather more important to know now the part which leads from the fallopian tube to the next of the reproductive system in female is the uterus uterus is a single inverted pear shaped muscular organ here it measures in an adult approximately 7.5 cm by 5 cm by 2.5 cm in general case the uterus has a part which is called the body that is the swollen sac like part which is also known as the corpus of the uterus then there is a more thin tubular part at the lower end of it which is called by the name cervix on the upper part of the uterus there is a much swollen muscular layer that is called fundus if we look on the sides of the uterine wall the uterine wall is thrown into three divisions the outermost protective layer is called the perimetrium this is indeed protective for the inner cells then we have the middle layer which is called the myometrium this myometrium is muscular in its constitution and the innermost layer of the uterus is called the endometrium this endometrium is thrown into two parts again the one which is closer towards the myometrium is called the basal layer and the one which is more towards the cavity of the uterus that is called the functional layer this functional layer becomes thicker during the time of gestation and pregnancy this also tends to turn thick during the time of the menstrual cycle now what are the different functions that the oviduct performs definitely there is a 28 day cycle in a girl who attains puberty 
and when the menstrual cycle begins through this you know cavity of the menstrual cycle there is the bleeding that is expelled out and then we have the implantation of the ovary which is only seen when the female has undergone fertilization and she has conceived so this implantation of the ovary also happens along the wall of the uterus and then after the implantation would have happened it undergoes a period of gestation which is the period for which the growing fetus is retained inside the mother's womb till it can be born that is till parturition so gestation and development of embryo is also done inside the uterus now finally it comes to the labor pain where the baby comes out via the vaginal tract the lower end of the uterus is in a form of a tube and that part is called the cervix there is the part of the cervix which is facing towards the inner cavity of the uterus this is also referred to as the internal orifice or the internal os and the side facing towards the vagina there is also a covering in the cervix that is called as the external os or the external orifice then we move on to the vagina which is also a tubular structure this is highly muscular canal which is lined with you know nerves and mucus membrane it's full of bumpy ridges called rugi which can stretch and retract the vagina the inner mucus which is present in this canal this is found to connect to the vulva and on the other hand to to the cervix which is a part of the uterus the vulva is the outermost part of the female genitals and this can be seen externally so in the next video we will discuss about the external genitalia of the female in further detail thank you for watching please do like share and subscribe to my channel